And here we go. So welcome back. We're here to uh, do a follow up artists in residence. We started this just a little bit after the COVID lockdown started, uh, talking with artists one on one about how they're working through the situation, how it's impacted them, uh, took a hiatus. And then my friend Sandy Mayer finished her beautiful new studio. And I thought, oh, got to talk to you about this. <laughs> so Sandy, welcome. Thanks for joining me. And uh, if you could take a moment and just introduce yourself. Hey, Carol, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Sandy King, but I do go by Sandy Mare Art in the art world. Uh, just reclaimed that name probably about 10 years ago, just for simplicity with my, my maiden name added on and who knew how many Sandy Mares there were. So I had to add art on the end of that. Uh, but I'm a mixed media artist, watercolor artist, uh, have lived an artful life my whole life. So have tried just about every medium between woodworking and pottery and everything alongside. Um, but I'm mostly focused now on watercolor and mixed media collage work. And I just moved into a new house, new studio about five months ago. So here I am. Yeah, interesting timing for you. We'll, we will get into that for sure. Uh, so I'm Carol McQuaid. I am a working artist as well. I focus mostly on printmaking and painting. And uh, this time has been very interesting for me as well. So Sandy, yeah, I'm dying to hear. You were just in the throes of finishing your house when the world kind of changed. Is that sort of what happened? Yeah, and it's funny because I've thought about this last year and I would have to say any big transition doesn't happen overnight. It's always a process. So when my husband and I decided to downsize, we had to look for the where and then came the when and then came the execution of that. So this was uh, uh, wrapping up of a house that we lived in for 21 years that had a home studio in it. And I decided that while we built the smartest thing for me to do for my sanity was to get an off-site studio set up, which was a first for me. I had done that in before kids, when I had a weaving studio, before I had my, my family came along. Uh, so that was an interesting experience as well, trying to have an, move all of my art supplies and my art life into an off-site place. I wouldn't say that that was um, uh, an experience I thought would be as tricky as it was, to be honest, uh, trying to, uh, I'm a person who works when I need to work, whether that's early in the morning or late at night or even on the go. So having to drive down to a studio to all of a sudden get into the jazz of where I was, was, was a new experience for me. And then packing up that studio, moving it to the new house that we were building in a pandemic uh, was you know, a whole experience unto itself. Uh, so it was, yeah, it's been tricky, but we've been in about five months, uh, still lots to unpack and do, but we were actually thrilled that we were able to complete the project. And um, yeah, just trying to get settled in. So there I am again, trying to think, okay, now where was I before I left off? Right. And, and in, in COVID times. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of upheaval, sh double shift, you know, going to this mm -hmm. studio. So you were in an off-site studio when this all was going on. Was it shared with other people or was it just, was it a space you could go in and safely work or, or did that affect you? Yes, well? so actually when I think about it now, that studio space was in the back of a retail store that sold Art, 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 not supplies, but gifts, art, creative things. It's a, a woman who uh, supported local artists and she had a very nice large space that was well lit with a sink in it, yeah. um, which is always key. Oh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. You know, it's funny that the things that you appreciate, you think, oh, I think. Um, and I moved out of that space probably all the, the months. I think we moved in here in May and I think I exited that studio in April. Yeah. So yes, COVID times, she was restricted. Of course, I had 24 hour access. So that was good that I could go in and work whenever I wanted, but I watched the world start to shrink and wasn't sure how even she felt about me being in this, you know, back and forth. So all of that uh, was happening. And, and I think we as artists were, 
making it up as we went along in a way. Where are we? Where is our inspiration? Where are our supplies? Where is, where are we? Yeah, yeah. I was in a shared studio right at the start and it took me a month or two to really admit to myself that, um, that I wasn't gonna go and it was time to convert parts of the house into studio, which right. um, it had been a long time since I had worked at home opposite from, from you and I love that transition so so uh, yeah it's um, but I wonder how a lot of these studio spaces shops places that have you know all the little artists nooks and crannies that we fit ourselves into how they're being impacted kind of long term now that it's dragged on I think it's a good question and I think again I I think people artists often ask themselves is a studio space away from home better for them or is working from home less expensive is it you know just just that balance and i have to say over my career of my um art business i've i've, I've done it in all different ways and i think that to me where you are at the moment is is what works for you then and when it's not working then you look to something else yeah. and I found that actually the off-site studio was interesting in a, in a way that I wasn't used to and that was that I had much more exposure to people that were curious about what I was doing yeah uh, I, I when my door was open up yeah I well it was I I, I found myself saying to people you know uh, I, and actually the, the the retail space that was in the front of the studio she sold our work artists work my work so people love to to come and meet the artist yeah. and I could hear her if I had the door open and I would close the door if I needed to be focused and not be interrupted but there are days where I was doing something that um, I was happy to have the interruption and I could hear these chattering voices on the other side uh, and uh, you know people would come in they were curious to see what you're doing so I actually felt quite a bit more engaged yeah yeah. Uh, the people who were supporting me saying, you know, good for you. I like what you're doing. Uh, and they would come back um, and maybe purchase or ask more questions. So I, I, that was something that I wasn't used to. And actually it was nice. Yeah. But now you're in this gorgeous space. So let me, uh, let me fire up your video. And if you would walk us through it, talk us through it, I would love to uh, see where you're working now. Just take me a sec to fire this up. Hang on one second. So the space is on the top floor of the house, uh, basically rooftop, so it's got skylights. This portion of the room has a patio door to it, so I can let the fresh air in and nice. the sound of the birds and the light, the light, the light, the light. It's just... Oh uh it's it's so fantastic and this area that i've got a high table and a low table i don't know there's the skylights uh, my storage area everything has to be a fingertip away and these two different levels of tables are a reminder of how i work because i never sit down uh, very rarely so i'm on the go uh, everything has to be reachable for me and uh, all my bits and pieces. This uh, table that you can see over in the corner is my dad's drafting table was he when he went to university. Oh, and yeah. I love it. Uh, that's a little picture of me, the selfie that I did oh, a few oh, years ago. With your buddy who I'm gonna <laughs> want to hear about. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and when I did this filming of the studio, this is a project that I'm working on with a very special friend. She's written a poem and I'm doing some illustrations. We're gonna turn it into a book for her, for her granddaughter, that's very special. Uh, this area is just my, can you reach, do you need it? Looks messy in a way, but it's actually pretty organized. Um, love the half half empty half full jar anything when I travel that will carry pens or pencils I always bring home and it's a reminder of my travels this is a series of work that I've had in a show um, before COVID times it's mixed media collage work which I'm also working on still at the moment and I love that um, yeah, storage oh, shelf. The walls are gorgeous. Yeah, and always a chair. You have to have a chair, a little table beside it in case I need to do some stitching or have someone come by and sit and have a visit. My mom's sewing table from when I was a kid. I love that. Uh, my carts with my paints. I'm all about things on wheels. Yeah. And 
if you can move things around, you can rearrange it depending on what you're doing. I love this table. This is an old kitchen table of my parents. Again, I had it put on wheels so I can move it around. It extends out. I love old things, uh, things with a story. Again, more of the collage work i have working on, the jelly plate paper and sort of a narrative focus to that work. Uh, the ubiquitous bathroom where the water is kept. You can't have a studio without access yeah. to fresh water. <laughs> uh, and the light, it's just um, a magical creative space that stimulates my creative juices every time I come up here. Oh. Uh, and there's my bookshelf for my resources should I need. And there's there's my guy, there's Whiston, oh, holding yeah. court. That's so nice to see him in real life. So I am a happy follower of you on Instagram. Let me just stop the share. And uh, I love seeing him. You just have a magical way of bringing him to life, along with the dog that you often picture him with. So tell us a little bit about that work. Yeah, that organically just happened. I think uh, I started spending more time with my sketchbook and learning to draw. I took a watercolor course. I was curious. I think always a, a, an interest in a narrative illustrator, love children's books with watercolor in them. Uh, and I think I started to just learn how to use a pencil and my watercolors. And this little guy just kept showing up quite literally in, in my images. I think there is a, uh, a part of my creative process that is about humor and i i like to see that whimsy i love to smile and he just kept showing up and i went to so i just let him be there in in my watercolor illustrations and i had an interesting experience because i went to take a watercolor course in france one year and i had been sketching this guy and i decided that i would much rather hear about this story of him going to learn how to paint in France in a 3D form. And I've always been a sewer. I've made teddy bears over the years, I still do. Uh, and I decided just at the last minute, if you've read Big Magic and Elizabeth Gilbert talks right. about that just moment. I mean, there was the, I thought about it after and I thought the, the lightning bolt, I turned him into um, a character that I sewed and I just took an old, you know, doll pattern, teddy bear supplies and he came along with me and I put him in the images as part of the trip. And, you know, I made him a jacket along the way. He lost a pair of pants in the back seat of a car. Like it just became a narrative of his travels over the years. And I have found actually that when I bring him out, if I'm traveling, um, we were in Portugal once and I, I had an experience where he was with me. I always carried him in a little pouch because again, I'd rather have him be in the image than me. And, uh, there was a merry-go-round came around the corner and there was a merry-go-round and i had him in my hand and the man that was running the merry-go-round just became completely enchanted by this mouse right. and he cleared everybody off the merry-go-round and put him on and he ran the merry-go-round just for him <laughs> so i think there is a need for us to smile to have a childlike experience use our imagination um and when i got back from that trip of course he didn't have a name and that's when the I think I better name him because I think he's going to be here for a while. And uh, that's where the whist and the mouse came from because I named Sandy Mare after my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, who was born in Scotland in a little tiny place called Whiston. It's south of Glasgow and east of Ayr. Yeah. And uh, my husband said to me, it'll autocorrect, spell correct to Winston. So just call him Winston. And I thought, but that's not the connection with him. Yeah. So he shows up, he's the playful aspect, I think, in my art and in my, my narrative that says, you know, we need to still see that part of ourselves that is an imagination and a, and a playful side. Yeah. And is that narrative continuing now with what's going on now? Has Wiston been appearing? That's such a great question. I, I, I had trouble. I, nothing was really funny. Um, I really felt that for all of us, for me, the, the so grateful, so lucky in so many ways, but in this 
tricky time of moving and building and a pandemic and trying to get into that side of ourselves that that pushes us into our art side that gives us joy uh, I thought I wonder I couldn't I couldn't find that um, and yeah I, I struggled with that I have a, I, I have to say it's coming back I feel um, that there's a a resurgence in, in all of this and that we need this yeah. but I think it's a great question I think it's been tricky yeah so what have you been working on um, well it's so funny I was thinking this morning you know we talk about studios and and again because I I find I like to I never leave the home without my sketchbook uh, and when I was back and forth from the house that we were renting for eight months while we built, because we sold our house, packed our house, moved out of our house, lived temporarily someplace for a month before we moved into the place that we were renting, then building the house back and forth to the studio from the rental. I carried a tray with me at all the time that I would do a little embroidery stitching, and I just kept my juices going that way with that. So just lately, I've been back now in the studio and I'm working yet again on the collage series that sort of was winding up before I moved out of the temporary studio. Yeah. So doing that as well as this illustration story that I'm doing with my friend, as well as composing and compiling some of the stories about Whiston and all the artwork that I've done, because I would like to put him into a book. Um, and I think really he's more than one book. His stories of his travels have, have been uh, he's a series. Lots. He is a series. Yeah. Yeah. He's a series. Yeah. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Got to give him his due, due course. Yeah. 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 I know for me, like you would think everybody go home and stay in your room would be ideal creating time. But for me, it, uh, I took a big hiatus, like a big hiatus. And I was working on other things. But just this last week, I started shooting a... Um, a video demo because you know we can no longer go and speak to artist guilds and things like that I had an invite to do a presentation for the North Shore Artist Guild and uh, but we're doing it all by video now and that's what got me kind of restarted and so I'm taking the videoing that I'm doing making new pieces and uh, turning it into a Skillshare class so it's been kind of a uh, mm. you know pause everything for a good long chunk and then regroup and uh yeah so for for me i'm finding there's been a huge change in how i'm working and when you're looking at you started that collage series before everything changed and you're working on it now do you see a difference in the flow of what's happening on the paper i think uh short answer is yes i think what i'm you know when you move these collage pieces around on the canvas or whatever substrate you're using uh, before there was a narrative that that was focused in one direction and I definitely see uh, you know the impact of what we're hearing and seeing in the world as well as a different physical space um, it's to me again it's that narrative of optimism and, and and the message of hope and the message of light on the horizon i call this other series my horizon line series because there just seemed to be um just the way it went just the flow it had there was uh different layers to the the paper that i was using and i think in this horizon line series that i'm doing there seems to be always some light there seems to be something that we're looking in to look forward to and i'm just letting that become what it's it's going to be but it's interesting you should say that about because i you know truth be told i took a class from you an in-person class and i loved it and i think for all of us now for the artists that we admire and respect we're sort of saying i need more of you i i would like to keep that going and how can we access that through zoom classes through skills skillshare through everything yeah. uh all the all the different methods that they are so i'm actually glad to hear that you're you're finding that way yeah, I'm deep into it right now and I'm just loving it and uh, this new project a lot of it, it is going to be more what I found like my work was all about travel and places and how we inhabit them and now I have um, I hadn't spent five consecutive days 
in, in my home for years, really. And now I am here on this mountaintop just hunkering down. I'm so into my kitchen, so into cooking and food and creating. And that's what, like, that's what uh, my imagery is now. It's completely changed what, what is interesting me. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm so curious what's happening with everybody else out there, how, how they've been redirected or what. Yeah. And another in, thing that, in, with that in mind, I think too, maybe other people are moving, they're, they're finding that they, their studio spaces, their shared studio spaces are shifting. So I'll be curious to see how, you know, you get a chance to speak to other people that are, were in shared spaces and now they're not because of COVID or they're coming home because the cost of having an offsite, um, you know, space to, to, to work in just isn't working for them financially anymore. Yeah. And I find the other thing that's happened with me is like, I had a, a, a garden that I'd invested 21 years and, and it gave me great joy. Uh, and I had a different visual vista daily. Um, again, other than traveling, which was an inspiration for me always, it's always about the conversations you can overhear um, as you're traveling that are always spark me and inspire me. Uh, so my space has pared down and I've recognized a real passionate need for certain things. So again, for you, for your appreciation for your kitchen, I've recognized that one of the first things I did was go out and buy a little bird feeder and hang it in my bare backyard because I missed the sound of the birds and uh, bought a little water feature, just to the sound of the water, just those things that um, whatever it is that, that feed and, and nurture us with inside. So yeah, yeah I think uh, the studio shift space is probably going to be fascinating to see yeah. what people are managing. Yeah. A couple of people who I am looking at talking to in the near future, um, one of them has gone deep into her garden, so that'll be fun to see, <laughs> Rosemary Burden. And, uh, and I'm talking with a couple of artists who do have a shared space and they've found a way to re-engage with it so mm. that's coming up in the next few weeks and i'm super curious to find out like a lot of my for me i was able to get out of my space uh they're still thriving which is great it's an amazing mixed space in penticton which is mm. the closest city to where i am um but yeah so much change so for our viewers where in the world are you physically yeah. or online both. Let's start with physical. Both. Yeah. Physical, I'm on the east coast of Vancouver Island in a city called Nanaimo, which is right across from the city of Vancouver. Uh, and globally, that's always a mystery to people that it's Vancouver Island, but it's not <laughs> not really Vancouver. Do you know what I mean? Um, north of Victoria, most people are, are familiar with that. And uh, we are, again, in a smaller space, but how gifted to have this studio space, which I've always wanted to be able to pull everything together in one space. So physically, it's the top floor of a house. Yeah. Um, and the I can see Bowen Island from here. So I can see Vancouver. Oh, wow. And, mm -hmm. and right in the downtown core, which again, has helped me with my inspiration, I would say, about just being able to walk out the door. Where we lived before was a little bit more remote. Uh, so my home and my garden was an inspiration. But the social connection, I think, especially at this time of COVID, um, when I'm just needing to walk away from what I'm doing because I need to take a break, I go out the door and walk along a seawall, which is similar to the seawall in Vancouver. Uh, I see people, hear conversations. Uh, it's, it's beyond therapeutic. So. Yeah feel very lucky for that mm. um yeah that's the physical space yeah yeah and I live online as, as Sandy Mare Art again I who knew that there would be so many Sandy Mares but I had to add art onto the end of that name and I really did feel a need to connect back to my roots to my my maiden name uh, and that's been very um kind of very thoughtful and and, and interesting for me to, to go back to those Scottish roots that came from Scotland and immigrant grandparents and that kind of thing. So um, yeah. that's my... I love it. I love hearing about where the name Wisdom comes from too. I've wondered about that. My granny was from Glasgow as well. And uh, oh, fun. came over when she was 18, lived to 102 and never lost any of that accent. So I, I love... Yeah, I love how you embrace 
your, your history and your past and yeah it's beautiful and that chair that you have in your studio when all of this blows over i am going to plant myself there with a big cup of tea and, and sit and have a face to face with you <laughs> um, come and actually it was always my hope to be able to have visiting artists come and do you know workshops and things here even for small groups so it may happen i'm going to keep my fingers crossed but i think for our studio spaces as much as i carried my little tray back and forth in my rental and i would go in to my studio my, my temporary rented studio and sort of get back into it it it's our artistry and our creativity never goes anywhere it's just living somewhere else that we need to, to pull it in uh, and I'm when I saw you on Instagram the other day carving I thought uh, we all live our lives in in maybe a, several different iterations but there's something that just never goes away and you look at those beautiful pieces behind you oh. <laughs> um that it just well I, and they're they're just it it's it's a creation from you only you that you do that you make so uh it, it's all of our creativity is just waiting to to get going again or get yeah. you know reinvigorated again in this crazy time yeah absolutely yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch moving forward what happens. And I also love what you said about uh, the hope and the positivity. Like that's that's honestly always what I get from you. And it's just a really nice thing to hear right now as things are, you know, a little crazy, uh, but also there are gifts tucked into that that I think are, you know, if you're if we're looking for them, we're finding them. So. Well, you know, Carol, I worked as an, as an operating room nurse for 35 years while I did my art on the side of my desk on the kitchen, off the kitchen table when I was raising three kids. Yeah. And one of my favorite things about my job as an OR nurse was that I had such a short window of opportunity to get to know a patient, get to make them feel comfortable before they were put under an anesthetic. And the stories of survival, and you talk about your granny and her... her um, uh, her accent and uh, I, I think that that's where the, the will within us to, to keep going um, is such an important ultimate message and a little woman that I had who was 93 that came in to have her cataracts done that was wearing red patent shoes oh. and she had a and I poking out from underneath the drape and of course you can't help but say so tell me why you're wearing red patent shoes. Um, I should save that for another time. But uh, she, she had a story about being a, a war bride and coming across to Saskatchewan on a train. And um, anyways, it's, it was a story of positivity about the fact that her husband left her, she was pregnant, had another child. And her now adult son say, you live every day as if it matters. And she said, I'm getting cataracts done today and I'm going to wear my red patent shoes. So oh, we, we have to come within ourselves to find that strength of what, um, what keeps us going through this crazy time. Because it's not over yeah, yet. Not um, close. Yeah. Not yeah. even close. But it will be. It will be. Someday we'll ride the wave of this and um, gather some barnacles along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for those of you listening, uh, check out Sandy's amazing work, follow Wiston's travels and, uh, and see her beautiful collage work and story at Sandy Mayer Art. I'm Carol McQuaid. You can find my work at carolmcquaidart.com or on Instagram, Facebook, all the, all the usual spots. And if you are enjoying these videos, share it with your arty friends. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Artists in Residence Live. So we will be back uh, when we're back hopefully in the next week or so, to talk to more artists and visit their spaces. Sandy, I just loved having this catch up with you and I look forward to the next time we can do that face-to-face. -face. Thanks so much for joining me here. Thanks, Carol. It's been a pleasure.